Hey, Cameron McKenzie here at Cameron MCNZ on Twitter. And I wanted to talk to you about PDF data scraping with UiPath. Now this is supposed to deal with tabular data. I got another tutorial on how to do this with structured data that's more like name value pairs. But if you got a table and you wanna scrape it, this is the tutorial for you. So I guess I'll kick things off here by creating a new project and I'll call it PDF data scraping. And as that's being created, I just want to show you the PDF file that I'm going to be working with in this project. You can see that it's got a, some tabular data in it. So this is all tabular data, and you can call these rows tabular data as well. You can see it's like the same set of data that gets repeated over and over again. Contrast that against, say, the invoice number where there's a single invoice number. I call that name value pair. And if you want to pull out name value pairs, you should be using the anchor based activity, not the data scraping. I did a tutorial on that particular topic just a, a few minutes ago. So take a look at that if it's name value pairs you're after. But for tabular data, stuff that's gonna be in a list or in a table, well, what you wanna do is you wanna do data scraping. And so I've created this project here, UiPath Studio. This is the file I wanna use. I'm actually gonna copy that file into that project. That way I can reference it, reference it through a relative link. Maybe I can find that PDF data scraping. It's that project right there. Okay, fantastic. And I will need the name of that file as well. So when I open this main window and I tell this window, hey, I want to start a process, all I have to do is pass in the name of that file inside double quotes, of course, and that's going to get everything kicked off. Now, not only do I want to load that PDF file, but I also want to manipulate it inside of Adobe Acrobat Reader. So that means along with starting a process, I also have to open a window and what is that that's uh attach the whole process to a window so that's what i'm selecting here and it always says what window do you want to attach it to so you kind of have to get your pdf file on the same screen where is my pdf file i'm going to double click and open it there it is there and from here where it says indicate window on screen that you're attaching to i'm just going to click the whole pdf viewer there and that way the tool knows hey that's the, that's the program we're gonna be working with here. By the way, I like to deselect on the selector the actual name of the file. If you're gonna be looping through a bunch of files in the future, that'll throw things off because each file will have a different name. That's not necessary, but I just like to point that out for people that are gonna be taking this tutorial to the next step. Okay, so what do I wanna do as soon as I've kind of attached to that particular process? Well, I guess I wanna do some data scraping. And so to do that, I'm gonna again, move this over a little bit and make some space. For the activity here, I'm gonna do data scraping. It's gonna ask me, what do I wanna scrape? And I wanna scrape the address information. Now notice I'm just highlighting the first element in that table, but this will actually bring in all the data. You can see it actually says, okay, yeah, that's a whole table right there from the name, the address, the city, the state, the province, and everything. Is that all the data that you want? And I'll say, yeah, indeed, that is what I'm going after. And so that brings it in. Now, this data scraping activity ha is below the attach window sequence. So I'm actually just gonna drag that up there. And so now this is all part of the, the same sequence there. It just kind of organizes it a little bit. And what do we want to do with this structured data? Well, when this data is pulled in, you'll notice it puts everything into a variable called extract data table. That's a data table type of variable. What I like to do is I like to go through each row in that data table. So I go and look for an each loop. Now notice there's a for each and a for each row loop. If you use for each, you're gonna be in a world of pain. You need to use the for each row, otherwise it won't know what you're talking about when you start doing row operations. So I'm gonna add that on here. It says, okay, for each row in what? And well, in what? It's that data table that we just extracted all that data into when we did our screen scraping. And what do we want to do? Well, I just want to print out all the information that we've pulled in. So, you know, there's only one column here. So each of these are essentially column zero, index zero of each row. And so I can put a little right line on here. Works much better than the left line. And I can just say row at zero dot two string. 
And what this should do is it should go through every row that was extracted into this data table and print out the element in the first column there. And since there's only one column, well, it should print out my entire address to the console. So I'm going to click Save. I'm going to click Run. And let's see what happens when we actually execute this. Look at that. Everything that's been printed out in the console over here is my address. You can see Cameron 85, Ajax, Ontario, L1S, Canada. That's my address. So everything is working just swimmingly. Okay, well, let's take this to the next level. We've got a little bit more complicated tabular data here. It comes in four different columns. Let's do some data scraping on that. Again, it is exactly the same set of steps. They're just different than they were before. What I want to do is I want to add more data scraping. I want to have my PDF file on the screen so that I can go in there and, and scrape it. So I click data scraping. It says, what do you want to scrape? I click next. I only have to pick one column, one cell in this whole table, and it'll figure the whole thing's a table and pull all the data in. And here you can see, yeah, it looks like it's nailed it. Two and four, two and four, book and a t-shirt, book and a t-shirt. There's 80 and 20. So life is good. This has now pulled everything into my UiPath Studio. I do need to move this around a little bit. I wouldn't mind having that right up there. So I'm going to just move this right there. I think that looks good. Yeah, right after we do the first structured data table, we will do the second structured data table. I'm pretty happy with that. What do we want to do here? Well, I guess we need another for each row. Again, don't do the for each, do the for each row. And for every single element in the extract data table, remember this has been given a new set of values. I'm using the same variable, but it's been given a brand new set of values this time around, so it's valid. What would I like to do? Well, I'd like to do some right lines. And I could write line what, row at zero dot two string. And then I could copy that and paste it in four times because there's four columns. Say row at one, row at two, row at three. Save all of this. Look for any errors. And I don't see any errors here. Give it a save and then give it a run. Hopefully it's now not only doing my address, but also pulling in all of this information from the invoice, the book, the t-shirt, the quantity. And if I scroll up a little bit here, you can see all of it is right in there. And you see, right, we got two Pickering of Springfield books for $10 for a total of 20, four Pickering of Springfield t-shirts, $20 and, uh, for those, a total of $80. And now I've got all of that data that was in this tabular data brought into my program as well. Then you'll notice that I'm using you know, the index based counting of the columns here. And you, there's ways that you could just use the name of the column if you've got a column name there. But I think this demonstrates how to pull that data out fairly easily. And I'm not storing this in variables, It'd probably double the length of time of this tutorial if I created a variable for each of those properties. But you know, if you're doing normal software development, extracting that data is probably what you're doing, getting that data, storing it into variables and objects, and then maybe they're writing that to an Excel file or a Word document or throwing it into a queue somewhere. But that gets you started. That's shows you the basics of going through an entire PDF file and scraping tabular data off it. And we did it in two different places, but the same way both times. And there you go. That's how easy it is to scrape tabular data with UiPath. If you enjoyed this tutorial, head over to theserverside.com. I'm the editor-in-chief over there, and we've got lots of great articles on enterprise software development. Also, if you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ, and subscribe on YouTube.